Hey, it looks like we are live. I hope everyone is having a great day. We made it to yet another Wednesday. Uh, here in New York City area, and we are being smoked out by the wildfires that are over in Canada. Today was really weird. We actually had orange skies during the midday. And during the day, which should have been sunny, it was actually... We needed the, I needed the lights on in the house. It was really crazy. And so, okay, so let's see who we have today. We have Mr. Roy Color Graphics all the way from New Jersey. And we have Patty on the road. Please take it easy, drive slow. So glad you're here, Patty from Illinois. Oz all the way from uh, Atlanta, Georgia area. How are you? We have Clutch Pyro, Patrick from from Massachusetts, great to see you, Dwayne. Dwayne from the South Central part of California, San Luis Obisco, San Luis de Obisco. So glad to see you, sir. So what a great group we have already. So this is part four of this portrait of Michella, and very interesting. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, <laughs> but we're gonna do it together. That's what's important, you know. Uh, so uh, let's see so um, last week was a lot of fun we got to do a lot uh, we worked on her 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 coat and then we worked on her arm a little bit and did the background so we got a lot done so what I'm going to do I'm gonna just experiment here hey what could go wrong mr. Leahy says right uh, so what I'm going to do is get my glasses on and uh, <laughs> that's right I'll go to the loony bin with you I don't give a crap right <laughs> so I have my detail mixture in the airbrush right and so since I love ink so much, why don't I see if I can use ink at this time, right? Uh, what do we got to lose? So right now, I'm just going to take this. I'm going to lower the air pressure a little bit because... So I'm going to try, and I think it's working. Now the thing is... With this, you got to make sure that you don't stay in one spot. You don't want to oversaturate. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to be creating a little bit of an underpainting. There's more hair uh, over here. So, I'm going to use the medium I'm most comfortable with. And I'm just going to draw with the detail mixture here. And then I'm going to glaze over it with color. So I'm going to use a little bit of my oil painting knowledge. So I'm going to go ahead first uh, put in the India ink and then I'm going to glaze over this with color. Now I wouldn't do this if I was going much lighter in color, but the hair up here is pretty dark so I can get away with it. I don't have to worry about blue shift, right? Blue shift is like, dun dun dun, blue shift, look out, right? So, always worried about blue shift. But yeah, the India ink is great because, you know, it's it has so much control. You don't have to worry about tip dry. So whenever you're working on a, a portrait uh, in acrylic, uh, it's always great to go ahead and and use it whenever you can. I learned just about every medium in my eight years of art school, right? Uh, any medium you can think about in painting and drawing, I pretty much was formally taught that. And that gives me a great edge because I'm able to do things that in some mediums people say that's impossible but since I did it in other mediums I'm like why not and it kind of like a lot of innovations happen hey we got Mr. Air Todd from San Diego and Brad Mummery all the way 
from Manitoba, Canada. How are you guys doing? So glad to see you. So as you see, I'm just giving some some depth some uh, to her hair. Just fixing the drawing, so to speak. So when you have acrylic on the surface, it's much more slick than, let's say, working on paper. So notice that I lowered that air pressure quite a bit. And I'm just going to be very gradual. You know, spidering will happen almost immediately at this stage. It's going to come down here. So another good thing for India inks, because now you can, you know, work certain areas in the India inks and you don't have to worry about about any any of the problems that come with let's say doing some of these working these early areas getting the shapes down so so far the experiment is good and like I said I can glaze over this with color later which is cool And you can see how I can actually get in there and you can almost and it looks like the color is is almost there Move this light here okay and you'll see later how I go ahead and I will glaze some color on top of this. But it's much easier for me to get the shapes now because I'm not worried about, about color. I'm just worrying about getting the shapes in. Like right here, this dark by her collar. Let's work on her eyes there. And Rick Lotta all the way from Canada. How are you, sir? Great to see you. in this side of the white of her eye there. And let's work on our lower lower eyelid here. And like I said, I'm going to come back in with some color, but it's great to establish the shapes right now with these very diluted uh, India inks so you can see they work well together the India inks are also very uh, they're very waterproof so it's once the India inks are dry they're not going to react to or interact with the airbrush uh, the airbrush uh, acrylics afterwards which is great but I can do glazing over it so it's like I'm continuing the underpainting. So right now I'm just going to be working on the anatomy of her skull. And as you can see, we're we're just kind of working things out right now. What we do on this side, we have to do... Oh, well, thank you, Rick. Always a pleasure to, to see you. And thank you so much for spending your Wednesday with me. I really am honored. Thank you, sir. And once again, just, just coming in and 
working out some of the anatomy and everything like that and I don't have to be worry about color at this point I'm just gonna worry now the great thing is let's say if I make a mistake I can always come over that with with acrylic right in the later stages of the game but now I do like the fact of of this just kind of slowing things down a little bit right bringing things in you know not always going in with gangbusters and let's see I'm gonna make sure I'm only streaming once here I said something about secondary and primary live streaming oh look at that there's this one right now is upcoming interesting so it says here please configure both primary and backup streams correctly the comparison of streams failed because of because one of the streams has an invalid configuration so that's interesting I'm just going to look at this real quick hit refresh okay so nope it's just one live stream one two three here's four I think YouTube is just uh, kind of freaking out a little bit but I can do enough freaking out for all of us YouTube doesn't have to freak out okay and so now I could actually work on the anatomy I don't have to worry about switching through colors and everything I could work out the colors later so it's like working on the underpainting later in the game right not just in the beginning now right here we have a little bit of uh, a larger mass of hair on the side so I'm just going to do that with the ink there's a little bit uh, the great thing is, if you spider, you can just wipe it right off, which is cool. And right over here. So if I want less spidering, I'll just increase my distance as I'm doing now. Continue refining these shapes and her eyebrows come a little bit more towards the center between her eyes I have to get that see you have to really pay attention to all the measurements and that's where the likeness is and I want to get the likeness of this beautiful lady definitely do and Colette, how are you? Great to see you. All the way from Wisconsin. How are you, Colette? And just bring this down. Right. Yeah, so you see how I don't have to worry about color at this point. I could pretty much just come in with the India ink and then glaze over it with color. Uh, it's just my own little system it's not the best I mean it's not the the right way or the wrong way it's just something I'm working on now there might be later down the round later down the line I may be working on a different system so it's all it's all what what you feel at the moment I'm actually going to come in with some paintbrush techniques in a little bit to do some cool stuff uh, let me change the uh, angle of this camera. So, 
There we go. Perfecto. And how's the picture and sound quality today, okay? shadow over here maybe we can work on her ear over here a little bit over here and I'm going to be working right along here just worrying about the anatomy trying to get that correct almost like reworking the underpainting which is interesting it's an interesting concept I'm going to go back into the dark here Thank you, Colette. And Brad said that the sound is really good. Thank you. Even though YouTube is telling me differently. I don't know what YouTube is doing. I think I have the air pressure a little low, so I'm just going to raise that uh, air on the pack valve here. Also, I could use some really cool uh, action with the colored pencils, which I will be working with them with you guys as well, which I like to work with. So let's put some ink in here, shall we? And let's see, can we put in a medium mixture? Why not? We're going all the way. Medium mixture. And we're going to use our paintbrush. And we're just going to go into work on some areas here. 
go. Remember, I like to use the dry brush technique. And I just take the brush and just get rid of some of the excess moisture. And then I just come in and work on some of these areas here. Make sure it's not too wet. And then I'll glaze over color on top of this. Hey Brad, how you doing? Great to see you, sir. How's everything? I'm so glad you're here. So Brad's been, uh, you know, part of the group for a long time. Brad's a school teacher, an art teacher, which is really cool, and a very excellent artist in his own right. So Brad, where are you from, sir? Uh, I know you well, but I don't remember where exactly you're from. I believe the Midwest, if I'm not mistaken. Arkansas, very cool, very beautiful place. Oh, that's great. Is your school year almost over, sir? And if so, what do you plan on doing for the summer? Are you going to do more of your own artwork or traveling? I'm going to reshape. Her, her jacket right here on the collar. There we go. So the hair, which I was telling a student earlier today, is something that you're going to be working on <coughs> from the very beginning to the very end, and you just have to stick with it. And don't try to solve it right away, that will happen. You just do bits and pieces, work from the large shapes to the small shapes, and it'll be ready when it's ready, as far as complete when it's completed. There's really no rushing it. on some of the more dominant eyelashes here and let's zoom in oh been on break for about two weeks Brad says opened an art studio where he can give lessons to adults have a mural coming up at the local hospital and hopefully time off with his wife that's great sir that sounds like a great summer if you ask me that sounds amazing I'm just going to go ahead and work on some of these larger, more dominant eye eyelashes here. I know I'm going to be airbrushing over it, but at least I'll have it set up, you know? And 
it's good to have some of the details showing so this way you know where you are as far as the likeness is concerned and we have a couple of going over here main thing with eyelashes make sure they're equal not equidistant and not the same size otherwise they'll look fake and so you get also make sure the direction is fine now usually there are not many lower eyelashes Oh, cool, look at that. So Colette says, nice progress on uh, Brad Mummery's oil portrait. That's very cool. Yeah, my oil painting students are doing really great. I'm also teaching online classes uh, for oil paints. If anyone is interested, just instant message me. Uh, that's something I've been doing now for the last couple of months. and. Uh, you know it's been working out great now if anyone knows I have six years of formal training uh, in portraiture in with uh, oil paints but I'm also teaching landscape and still life painting with that the whole gamut on this side you don't really see too many eyelashes Is covered by the hair here. Thank you, Brad. Brad says that I'm a great teacher. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Hey, Adrian, how are you, my friend? Good to see you. How's everything? So glad you're here. Now, Adrian, I know you well. Uh, what part of the U.S. are you from, sir? Or are you actually from the U.S.? Australia very cool very cool people in Australia so glad you're here sir I really appreciate that and you do some great work there sir always enjoy your artwork Adrian And we're going to start <coughs> coming in with color in not too long from now. But I just like to establish some of the shapes using the Airbrush India inks. I mean, they're great for underpaintings and also right here for doing some light work without uh, having to worry about color. And then you can go over this with color, which is great. So many, so many different techniques available. Wow, 60th. You're too young for 60, right? You, I thought you were no, I think you were 29 or something. Wow, look at you. But we have to stay young at heart. But 60 is the new, what do they say? That 60 is the new 40, right, Adrian? Ah, thank you. Colette says an amazing mentor. And Colette loves oil painting. Yes, she does. And she's very good at it as well. She has a great natural ability. So does Brad. Okay, so 
So where else can we kind of play? Well, maybe right here with her, her front teeth here. So what I'm going to do is go get some water and then we will start working on some of these areas in color. But let's look at that hand first. Is there anything I can do right now with her hand? Let's see. Let's see what we can do. Hey, how you doing, honey? Great to see you. How's everything? All the way from Rockville Center, New York or Long Island. What do you think of all that 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 uh that smoke we're getting from Canada, huh? So, uh, let's see, let's see. We have some Canada people in the house here. Rick and uh, and Brad Mummery. What do you? So we have actually had an orange sky today. It was really amazing. Uh, it was around 1:30 in the afternoon. And I had to turn all the lights on in the house because of all the smoke that was coming from the wildfires in Nova Scotia. And it was literally the most amazing thing I ever saw. It looked apocalyptic. And it was actually orange, the sky, right, honey? It was just, I normally can see, even on a cloudy day, I can normally see the Empire State Building from my house, from my studio, and I couldn't see it today. <laughs> it was really weird and the air quality is really terrible it might be one of the reasons why I'm coughing so I'm just going to make sure the drawing is a little correct so I'm going to come in with this India ink here kind of work on the, the drawing you lose the drawing when you go in with color sometimes so I'm just gaining that back. <coughs> and then right here, it's a lot. This dark comes down right from here, which is so interesting. It's dark. And then it connects with this dark right here. So let's see if I can just come in with the airbrush and kind of fill this in. And like always, I'm going to not go so dark right away because I don't want spidering or oversaturation of of the ink on the surface. And this area is dark over here as well. We'll darken this. Darkening that is going to bring that hand forward. Right here. 
right here. This I'm going to actually maybe go a couple of layers here, and then I'll just bring in that Payne's gray and black over here, and I can also fix the drawing here a little bit. Oh yeah, Quebec as well. And the way that the uh, the jet stream was that it missed a lot of the country up north, like Vermont and parts of New Hampshire, went right around and swung around and just pretty much engulfed New York City, New Jersey, and Long Island. Colette says, from a firefighter friend, tape the doors, windows, and any crevices with painter's tape. Oh, that's a great idea. Definitely. Um, they said that this fire was a fire that happens once every 200 years. That's how big it is. Uh, that's an every summer kind of thing in California, definitely. Brad says it's been a long time since he's been on and glad to see you working in color again. Thanks, Brad. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, getting back into oils and uh, working in color there. It's just time to get back into color. And Adrian says, love your work, Tim. We'll purchase one of your airbrushes for a try. Oh, wow, that would be an honor, definitely. I'd make sure I I would make sure, put that through all the tests so it's perfect when, when it gets to you. So when you're ready, I'll make sure that I uh, give you the red carpet treatment, Adrian. So interesting, so the ALAR cartilage right here, I'm going to be working on that. And let's see, best to do it with the inks and trying to do it with color. And then I can go over it with color. see if I can work on some of the detail in her upper lip some of those little wrinkles that we all have just make sure you get the angles of those wrinkles I wouldn't call them wrinkles like um, the little patterns on the lips do is I'm going to get the water and dilute the detail mixture just a little bit to get more subtle uh, so I'm going to dilute that mixture 50-50 uh, 50% water and 50% detail mixture here and I'm running out of detail mixture from the airbrush here 
So I'm going to put more in, and I'm going to do six drops of detail, six drops of, uh, of water. And Brad Smith says, he's sorry for asking questions that probably already been answered, but what type of colors are you using? There are never any bad questions. Ask away. I don't care if someone answered it. Question answered a question a hundred times. I'm glad to answer it. Uh, I like using golden fluid acrylics. And with the fluid acrylics, you have more of a range of colors, and they have more of the historical colors that I like. You know, such as you know burnt sienna and raw umber that kind of thing or see you know uh burnt sienna one two three four five six seven i love that and naples yellow uh so i like things more tradition because i was traditionally trained so that's pretty much where i am with that so that's one of the reasons why i really enjoy uh, working in golden fluid acrylics, of course you have to dilute them, right? So I talked to the the chemists over there at Golden, and they've given me some formulas to go ahead and dilute them correctly. And you see, I'm working on the little patterns on her lips. And then I'll glaze over with some color in a little bit. The most important thing is to get the, uh, the angle of these little wrinkles here on her lips. But she has such beautiful lips, it's really important to get them when working with Michelle's portrait here. See how I can sculpt her lips now, which is good and important. And let's see. Um, okay, also, since we do have this detail mixture here, uh, let's see if I can just tone down her teeth a little bit because they're a little bit in shadow. So you just tone them down. And let's zoom out. So now we see we're actually getting some nice depth which we didn't have in the beginning of our session today. And it's a little bit more massive of uh, the the main dark here so I'm gonna actually darken it with so you'd be surprised how my India inks actually react and work well with either Createx or any airbrush paint because they are made they are waterproof so being waterproof they could work over over the inks and also over the, the acrylics and acrylics can work over them so it's 100% okay. A little bit darker right on this part of her ear. Make sure you don't oversaturate. Just take your time. Oh, we have some shadow going on and there's no better tool than the detail mixture for this let's take a look so we have this hair coming down and there's this little bit of a cast shadow and what better way than to do it with this smoky very transparent 
hairbrush into your inks right here. And we can always glaze over that, do some eraser techniques. But you find that, you know, as we're working, we definitely see a lot of things we didn't see before. And that's what it's all about, is just kind of discovering the portrait, discovering the character of your model. So look how beautiful we can, and subtle, I can get this cast shadow from the hair coming down right over here. And then we have a little bit of a light shadow of the lower eyelid. Oh, so Brad says, do you sell uh, the colors you use as a set? Uh, I don't, but you definitely can... Um, you definitely can get them at Dick Blick. Uh, what I would do to start out, I would probably get the high flow set. There's a set of, there's a full set of transparent and a full set of opaque. And that would be perfect. Because basically the high flow is the fluid acrylic, but made for, made for airbrush. They're pretty much diluted and ready to go. Uh, with little dilution. The fluid acrylics, you have to pretty much dilute them 50-50 with airbrush medium, which is made by Golden. And then from there, you use high flow medium to thin them out even more. Over here, her whites of the eyes, a little bit darker over here on this side. bit and okay so we are starting to get a little more leeway here uh, I'm gonna come in with the uh, golden acrylic shortly maybe work on her eyes a little bit and let's see right here on the bottom of her jawline right here it's a little bit darker Right along here, it's a nice dark here. See if I could just establish this. See that dark as it comes down by the zygomatic bone right over here. The zygomatic as it attaches to the maxilla. And also we have to worry about the alar cartilage over here and there's going to be some really nice when we start coming in with those highlights it's really going to work out uh, we hope right <laughs> Okay, so now let's see. So I have my detail mixture in the Extreme Patriot Arrow. I have the Extreme Patriot 105 right here. And I think it's Ret Go. Move this over here like that. Okay.
Okay, let me check check the air hose over here. So I can see the valve wasn't completely open. So, all right, so game plan time. What do we do? What do we work on? So, let's see. What I'm going to do is I am going to dust, oh, let's work on her hair, right? I think that's a good game plan. So I'm going to get this kind of uh, golden burnt sienna with a little bit of Naples yellow. I'm going to mix that and we're going to start working on her hair. Maybe plow the field a little bit, you know, we work on some of the light areas and then kind of come in with the airbrush and see how that goes, right? We have a lot of work to do with her hair and then maybe see if we can, you know, force some some lighting, maybe uh, start a little blue shift and then go over it. So we'll work on that as well. And we'll just wing it. So right here, see right here the maxilla comes out as much more lighter, much lighter as it comes over here like this. And we'll see if we could bring some zinc white with a little bit of orange, maybe to work on that a little bit. And over here, just plow the field, get ready. And with that cast shadow, a little bit of skin is showing under there, which is good. And all right, and then we can work on her hand. So let's let's see if we could actually be bold and try and lighten this up and get a little more of an opacity here. So. So what we're going to do is we are going to mix some color. And we're gonna be bold. We're gonna we're gonna go for it. You know, what's the worst that could happen? So everyone knows I love zinc white when working uh, with flesh. And you see, uh, it, even though I went ahead and diluted, you can see it's a bit on the thick side, uh, Brad. So we're going to make sure we work on this. I have some pre-mixed pyrrole orange, and I'm going to put the tiniest amount in there, maybe one drop, two drops. That's not good, but let's dilute it, shall we, with some water. We're going to move that around and that's way too much orange so I'm going to add more zinc white there we go and let's put some uh, airbrush medium in there actually we'll we'll use the high flow medium let's see if this comes out it does get clogged quite quickly. There we go. And I'll just use a old palette knife, old plastic palette knife. That would be a pretty good nickname. Oh, look, it's old palette knife. You know, that's not exactly the most attractive name, but I can imagine that. You know, a name of an old painter. Uh, old palette knife. Okay, it's a little bit on the orange side, so we're going to do a little test. It might work because of the blue shift. That's why you want to go with the opposite of of the uh, the opposite color of blue, which is the blue shift. And we're going to see how this works. Hold on to your hats. Let's see. I'm going to put a little bit more water in there. I like it. I like it nice and diluted. Mr. Dwayne with the super chat. Thank you so much, my friend. 
I appreciate you and thank you always for your support. And uh, this means so much to me, my friend. Thank you. And uh, it just helps me to, you know, uh, continue to live stream without stress and, and really encourages me. And uh, I just really can't thank you enough, my friend. Really amazing. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you for your support and your friendship, sir. Okay, so now I'm going to test it. I don't want to go in like a cowboy because if it's going to mess it up, hey, I don't want any part of it. So let's go right up here and see what it does. So it's actually working pretty well. Let's see. So since the orange is in there, what it's doing is it fights the blue and you get a pure white. It's really interesting stuff. There you go. So I'm able to kind of fake out the paint. And what's interesting, it starts out dark because it's wet, and then when it dries, it becomes white. And uh, thank you, sir. Oh, my, it's an honor to be your friend, Dwayne. So, really works. So, when you go ahead and put the pyro orange with the white at this point, you want to make sure that you, you test it, right? And make sure that it's nice and thin. If it's too thick, what's going to happen is it's going to sit on there and it's going to be that orange color. But if it's very thin, what it's going to do, it's going to react chemically with the blue shift and you're going, they're going to like cancel out each other and it's going to become white. Let me give a really quick reason why. You know, a lot of people tell you about the blue shift and adding orange, and I just want to make sure that I kind of make it so you know next time. You need one of these color wheels. They're important. Uh, have them in your studio. You're going to be using it all the time. So about the blue shift. So here's our blue color right here. Now, when you mix any white, titanium white much more than others, uh, it has blue in it. And what's going to happen is that when you uh, spray it next to a, a darker color, that blue is going to come out, right? But what happens is, is that in the color science, if you put the opposite of blue, it's actually going to combat it. And that works for every color. So let's say if there was a green shift and you wanted to do the opposite to kind of combat that green shift, you would do its complementary color. So green would be red and blue, if we do the complementary color, would be orange. Now what's really interesting, I remember I was painting a purple dress and so I was going to get a blue shift, right? But since it's on the purple side, it's going to go a little bit of a purple shift. So this color right here. So I wanted to see what a blue violet was. And so rather than adding just uh, the pyro orange or the pyro red, I actually mixed a little bit of the yellow orange because it was on the purple side. So you see... Uh, you want to go to the opposite, right? So remember it's opposite on the color wheel. That's why we're going ahead and uh, Using that's why we're doing that is adding that to be the opposite of the blue So it kind of counteracts it and cancels the blue and that's we end up with just the white
And you see how it's really lightening things up. So. Yes, a lot of this stuff is science, of course. And I'm actually going to come in and kind of go over most of this and then I'm going to go over it again and it's going to create much more of a 3D effect because I'm doing layers of color and I'm also getting rid of that transparent look right and it's going to look more like an oil painting at least that's my that's my whole intent It really is coming out white and it, it's nice when it works out like this. And I'm even going to come over here and kind of blow this out here and then I'm going to come back in again and that's going to help to create uh, a much more kind of opacity that I'm after so it looks like I'm making a mistake but I'm not I'm just going to but all I'm going to do right now is use little boys room I'll be right back guys Okay, so you see, things are really looking very interesting. I'm actually going to do something a little avant-garde. Is I'm actually going to go over my darks with this, with this here, and then I'm going to go back over that again with the darks, and just to just to go ahead and create a unification of the colors here and get rid of any of the uh, any of the transparency of it and then just work that back with the color but it will work out So 
up, get a little too wet there. Let's see. And let's do the same with her hand here. Just come in, maybe lower this air pressure a little bit, huh? A lot. Oh, got a little wet. Just like with the airbrush India inks, you want to take your time and be patient and not try to you know get get that value right away come back there's got plenty of time to go back into it let it dry let it catch up okay make sure there's no tip dry so what if I get over spray onto a coat so what I can always paint that over that again I'm not so concerned with that I think the air pressure is a little high on the compressor let me double check fine it might be I'm just not used to the slickness of the um, of the acrylic on the wood panel that's probably what it is and I'm just kind of sculpting a little bit here and then let's go back here kind of lighten things up a little bit more here Just build up that light. And then right here. Now what happens is when you're doing this, eventually uh, there's no blue shift because you have the orange there. And I may move into just straight titanium white uh, if it gets to the point if I you know need it even brighter, which I probably will. Now I can scratch it out, but I'd rather not. Uh, but there's sometimes there's nothing wrong with that, right? So let's try something. Let's let's do this. Let's take a razor blade and let's see if we can right now. Now there's intentional blue shift here. Uh, this is really what I was concerned of, but I was intentional here because that forces me to come back in with the dark, and it's going to create a much more unified picture. It's going to look much more opaque. And so right now I have interesting light on the outside of her lips here. I'm just going to take this razor blade and lighten this up. See how that works. Maybe it will be better with the aggressive eraser. I don't know. Bring this over. And then come in with this light a little bit.
So I can start coming in and doing some some eraser or razor blade techniques. I think I'll probably go with more of the uh, eraser. I think the razor blade is a little rough. But we'll hold off here before we go in there. But let's see. Maybe the razor blade would look good on her catch light on her eye here. Let's see. Let's zoom in. All right. So right here, which is interesting, is this little bit of moisture. Let's see how this goes. Just a little bit of moisture coming right in like that. And then the catch light is right here. And a little bit of catch light. Now, it is a little early in the game to do this, but it's good to demonstrate. Let's work on the other eye. And we'll work on this catch light just a little bit. Now that's the gesso underneath that I'm able to do that, you know. And we have this little bit of moisture right here. I'm going to come in with color over this and then I can go over it again. Then we have a little bit of dots here and there. And so we zoom out, we definitely can see that it kind of adds a little bit of life to this portrait. And let's take a look at her lips a little bit. All right, so right here, I could add a little bit of light on this side of that wrinkle. Like I said, I'll be going back and forth. Like everything else, you just want to stick with it and know that, you know, Rome isn't built in a day. All that fun stuff. More pressure. It's going to go straight to the white. Less pressure. You're going to get like a pink color. of the teeth it's a little bit wider and I'm going to come in with some light blue on her teeth because it's not this done this dull color that I have right now so making a little mental note for me and let's see if I could just ever so lightly shape the alar cartilage here on her nose ever so lightly and there's just a little bit of light on this side and right here in the corner so let's uh, let's go ahead and see where we are so yeah it, you know it's it's a slow process it's not a overnight thing so we're just going to continue working uh, right here we have a little bit of a highlight right there on her fingernail and all right so now I want to come back in so since I've lightened that let's go ahead and if we can lighten this just a bit more. And 
And like anything else, even with this, you can oversaturate. So you want to hit and move, right? Hit and move. And it looks like nothing's happening, but it really is. You just have to be patient, put it down, let it dry, go back over it again. Because if you're going over it and it's not looking like anything's happening and you keep going over it, what could happen is that you get massive spidering. So just hit it, move, and then come back. But what we're doing is we're, we're creating uh, a definite uh, surface texture. And you know when you have that surface texture, it starts to really come alive. And once again, I'm going to go into the shadows and create an intentional blue shift in the shadows. It's in the lights that you don't want a blue shift because that's going to be bad. But in the shadows, I'm going to intentionally put in a blue shift that I can go over again and that layering is going to create depth for us that's my story and I'm sticking to it so it looks like nothing's happening I'm just going to come back and honey says have to say good night a bit early oh, have a great night get your rest I hope you have a great, restful, beautiful sleep and you wake up refreshed and don't work too hard tomorrow. Always a pleasure to see you, honey. Take care. So if you're patient, you go there. It looks like nothing happened. You let it dry, come back, and you'll see each time it gets a little bit more effective when you're using this pyrrole orange and white now you can do that in create text as well the pyrrole orange is really great uh, I when I'm doing uh, when I'm working in create text I, I like Drew Blair's 5050 illustration white and the whole line of illustration colors are great so notice that she's starting to have that kind of oil painting look that's what I'm after um, not the only thing to be after it's not the only style but that's what I'm looking to do I'm an oil painter of course right makes sense and very cool okay let's go ahead and work right in here like I said it looks like nothing's happening you're gonna let that dry and you're gonna go back into it again So when you're doing stuff like this and you're buffering that color, then you're you're going in a whole different realm of airbrushing, you know, because you're working on different kind of chemical reaction. Let that dry. Let's see if we can do some of this work in the hand here. It's much lighter over here. I'm definitely not concerned about any kind of overspray onto the jacket. Go, you know, any any kind of overspray in a dark area, you just go over it with darker and it's no problem whatsoever. very wet over there so we're just going to chill ok 
getting a really nice base here, which is nice, which is great. See, it does get a little wet, and you're just going to just wipe that a little bit. And I'm just going to chill out with that, let that catch up. But now I have a great opportunity to come in and work on this. And I'm going to intentionally, I'm going to intentionally right here, get some blue shift on that ear. Now, why would I do that? Because I can't have the ear be transparent and the other parts of the face be opaque. So... And I'm actually going to do that with the hair. I'm going to intentionally blue shift the hair to make it opaque. Remember, you take any transparent color and you add white to it, it immediately becomes an opaque color. And that's basically what I'm doing. Even where I put the India ink, I'm going to go over this. And I'm going to start to create uh, an opacity everywhere. Right in the eye too. I'm going to do that as well. And this way I have a reason to go back into it. And even in her eyebrows, right? I can't have the eyebrows being transparent. So I'm going to have to go over this and kind of intentionally blue shift them. So my idea is go headlong into the fire. Don't worry about the blue shift. You can see in weeks one and two, I'm kind of worried about it. I'm getting my bearings again, so I'm just attacking. Mr. Brad, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate that, my friend. Thank you, thank you. And, uh, you know, it's great working with you. Brad is my, my longest tenured student. He's just doing incredible things, and it's just a great pleasure working with him. Thank you so much for your support and your friendship, my friend. And without you, this is not possible. So thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. And you can see we're intentionally... You're not going to see that too much. You'll see it more like with Maria Osterley and, and uh, Mr... Uh, Mr. Drew Blair is sometimes they'll intentionally overspray. There's a great video by Maria Mar Marissa Osterley where she does this. She intentionally blue shifts the area. And you see it's not the end of the world, right? You can see that you know the blue shift is not causing any kind of harm at this stage but notice I'm not going blue shift in the light that would be bad okay. just blue shift in the dark right and then right here I'm going to do some blue shift over here Alright, so once again let's let's really blue shift that hair. And then when I come in with that blue shift, everything's gonna be opaque. And she's going the edges are gonna be more realistic. And it's just it's just gonna look less like uh, it's gonna look less labored and just have more flow. So here's, here's a painting I worked on a while ago, and you can see some of that intentional blue shift going on here, and then I went back over it with color. So thanks again for that super chat, Mr. Brad. I really appreciate you. And so 
I like it. And what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to uh, take this pyro red and I'm going to dust the background and intentionally blue shift that background. I know, I'm kind of crazy, but like I said, you run towards the problem. You don't run away from it. I started doing that when I first started airbrushing back in 2010 is I wanted to uh, actually be a little avant-garde and I'm out of uh, my mixture so let's put a little bit more in I'm going to blue shift this area back here as well just a little bit because I'm just crazy like that Just a little bit. Just so the edges are soft where I want them to be and hard where I don't want them to be. Let's get a nice smoky feel here. You see, this week I'm a lot more bold than I was last week. It's just, it comes back to you, you know? Just blue shift the heck out of this. But not inside here where it would cause a real problem. Yeah, so Maria Osterley, she has this wonderful <coughs> video on YouTube where she starts very transparent and then comes and intentionally blue shifts everything. I'm going to blue shift the, sh the jacket as well. Yep, I'm off the wall, guys. But it's going to make sure that it doesn't look super, super tentative, right? And then I can always come back darker but this is going to unify things it's going to be good I never took any of Drew's classes but I really appreciate him and uh, in the early days uh, you know he was very gracious to ask answer a lot of my questions and uh, so I kind of took his lead in the early going as far as working you know with the uh, working more opaque than transparent so in the beginning you know you may be afraid of doing something like this but it pays to be bold and why do it with this orange mixture well with this pyrrole orange and white mixture you can go ahead and buffer everything, but if you do accidentally get on the light of the skin, it's not going to cause massive blue shift. Uh, Brad says, does the blue shift happen in oil paints as well? No, that's the weird thing. Blue shift only happens in airbrush. Maybe with graphite. So remember in graphite, you never want to put white pastel or white charcoal over dark. Then you get a really weird grayish blue. But oil paints, no. Watercolors, no. So it's interesting. It's just like an airbrush thing. So you see how I'm dusting everything? And even though I'm lightening everything to death, uh, she's looking much more unified. And then when I come in with the dark, things are really going to start to pop. But what I'm after is uh, definitely getting rid of that kind of labored look, right? And kind of bringing everything together. It's unifying the shapes. And now when I come in with the darks and then even go over with the lights later, it's going to look really nice. I'm blue shifting the whole background because I want it unified. 
see how that's unifying. I mean, it's hard to see it right now, and but it's coming back to me. Like I said, I've been away from doing portraits in airbrush, but you can see how dusting over this, everything is kind of uh, coming together, unification, and then going back into the darks, and then hitting the lights, it's going to really pop. And that's my whole thing. So one of the reasons why I do this, when I when I do a drawing, I like to work on the midtones and dust everything down, and then come in with the lights and darks. I like doing that. So it's kind of along that line. I don't even know what time it is, guys. It's 11 o'clock already, so I'm so involved with this live stream and painting. I don't even, I got kind of lost track of the time. So what do you guys think of this kind of weird technique in airbrush? Have you guys seen it before? Is it like just old school to you guys? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And Brad says, does this panel have the marble dust mix on it? Great question. No, this is uh, straight. Uh, I don't think there's marble dust, but I think it's straight gesso. And as you can see, uh, it's nice and wet, you know, so it's. But what's happening is as we are doing these later subsequent layers, which I love, and I, it's something that, that happens in airbrush, something that happens in oils and pastel, is that you start arriving at a surface texture where it really just comes together, where the, the paint starts accepting just really readily, you know? Oh, great. So Brad says this is great, never seen it before. So thank you, Mr. Brad Mummery. Yeah, it is a definite different technique, but it is deriving from Mr. Drew Blair and... Marissa Osterley, but my own spin on it, uh, because I didn't take their classes, uh, kind of uh, went my own direction, but I wish I took their classes, because they're great, you know, love Drew, love Marissa, they're fantastic, okay, so now we're going to, in the last couple of minutes, let's mix a nice dark, Mr. John Diekman, all the way from Wisconsin, how are you, sir? How's everything over there? How's work? Taking a well-deserved bit of a water break. Okay, so now super cloudy, right? That means now we can come in and back in with the color. So, how are we going to mix that skin color, right? So the shadow plane, um, let's go ahead and get some colors, put them down, and you'll kind of hear my thought process. Ah, oh, stressful, so sorry about that. Don't stress too much, my friend. Um, I don't want you stressed out. And I know life is stressful, right? It's easy to said and done, uh, but try to de-stress for me, sir. Okay, so. I am going to, um, so looking at that, and I'm seeing first is we're going to start with some titanium white, right? We always start with our titanium white, and I'm going to get a little cup here. I'm going to move my painting out of the way. mix this up and this is golden fluid acrylics so we're gonna have to thin that out hey look the bubble and let's go ahead and put that in remember we're doing the dark but still we're gonna start with white and look at this interesting color burnt umber light by this is fluid acrylics I like this because it is kind of a brownish color we'll put some of this stuff in there uh, I don't even think I used it yet no, I didn't. Look at that. Okay. I'm just going to open this up. I just love how messy this is. I hate messes. I hate getting paint on my hands. I know I'm an artist, and I hate getting paint on my hands. Kind of ironic, isn't it? Um, let's get this razor blade. 
I'd rather get the paint on the razor blade than on my hand. Alrighty then. Alrighty then. Move this here. And you might say, watching me paint Tim in, in color, you're a mad scientist. And I'm like, you're right. I am kind of like a mad scientist. Let's see. We are going to put a little bit of this brown here because it's not brown and we're going to mix some let's do this pyro red that's kind of like the star of the day right let's go ahead and give a little more attention to pyro red and so i'm not sure what that's going to do right now but let's go ahead and do that 50 50 with the uh, airbrush medium I am not sponsored by Gold in any way. Just love their stuff. But if Gold is watching and you want to sponsor me by giving me all kinds of free stuff, you don't mind. These things get clogged. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so I'm just going to pour some in the old fashioned way and earn it. Okay. Put that over here. All right, now we're going to get that plastic palette knife. I use this for acrylics, not for oils. Okay, so what does it look like right now? It looks terrible. It looks like a milkshake gone awry. But we're getting there, right? We're, we know we're in the right direction. So it's a little on the chocolate milkshake so we're gonna add some some violet oxide let's do that love violet oxide very close to kaput mortem in its own right own right okay let's go let's see what this does or doesn't do We're getting there. So we definitely want it darker. And uh, you know, when in doubt, raw umber always seems to be a good choice. Love raw umber. It neutralizes and darks at the same time. Let's see what this does. And you can see, you know, kind of my thoughts on paint mixing. Is first you want to try and get the value. And then get the color. Or the chroma. So first is the hue, then the, well first the value, then the hue, then the chroma. So the chroma is like the saturation, how red is it? How close is it straight out of the tube? And I'm going to add a little bit more of this violet oxide. I kind of like what the Venetian paintings, painters did of the 15th and 16th century. You know, Titian, Veronese, Tintoretto, those cats. And definitely we're going to add more of this stuff. Go a little crazy. Getting closer. little more of this I want it darker so it darkens and neutralizes at the same time and just one more drop of this uh, violet oxide oh that was too much not good see if I can 
kind of scoop some of that out. Do a violent oxide ectomy. Okay, so we need some more of the airbrush medium. We've been putting quite a bit in there. And a tad bit of water. A little bit of nitroglycerine. No, no nitroglycerine, just kidding. And let's go ahead and mix this up a little bit more. Let's bring our painting and see if, if this is what we're looking for. Okay. So, it is a, let's see how it goes. Because looking at her picture here, it is more on that kind of brownish side. And I'm going to water it down just a little bit more. And we're going to go ahead and uh, clean out our... So when you're cleaning out from a light color to a dark color, you really just got to throw some water in there because the dark color is going to dominate the light color. But if we had a light, uh, a dark color in there and we were coming in with a light color, then it wouldn't be so easy. Then you would have to clean off the needle and everything because the dark color will dominate any light color you put in there. So go ahead and clean that cup out at least and let's do some test sprays shall we all right we may have to go darker than this I'm not sure notice I stayed away from black with skin tones I try to stay away from black as much as possible um, you know but I'm not afraid of black all right so let's see I'm just going to kind of dust here and you can see it's actually working so that's good news it's actually a nice color so we're re-establishing uh, our darks but you see that it's accepting because we have that blue shift it's actually accepting the color even more and then we have a really nice uh, reflected light, a colorful reflected light. And you see how we're bringing back that color. And let's see. Uh, Dwayne says, if I don't have at least a few painted fingertips, I might likely act, you didn't paint that day. <laughs> hey, Mr. Mr. Tone, how are you? That's true, right? You know, uh, it's kind of a badge of honor in a sense, I think. So I agree with you, Mr. Dwayne. Uh, like when you use up your paints, when you have to go out and buy more, that's like a badge of honor. How's everything, Mr. Tone? Great to see you. How's life in FLA? Now before I go too hog wild with this dark, I think I should start coming in with this mid-tone in between, right? But first I'll just hit some of these main areas. And now I can take that dark and kind of unify it with... Uh, with the painting, I'm gonna put some of this into her hair. Just to put some of that in there and then come in with the dark and I'm gonna have a nice unified feel to this because this way you'll have the same shadows, shadow color in the hair and so it's gonna work out. It's gonna be a much more unified painting. come here with the cast shadow underneath her nose
It has a little more life to it. And since we go headlong towards the overspray, uh, it feels better instead of worrying about it. Just attack it. And then let's bring that over to the to her uh, hand here. Bring in some of this dark. So it was a good choice of that color. It's a nice dark flesh color. Even though it looked like chocolate milk. And I'm not worried about overspray onto the jacket. That's why you go, you paint over the jacket. It's darker. So you don't worry about it. And as you can see, now we're starting to shape everything. And if you need to, you just take out the acrylics in a brush and brush in that background. So, you know, there's no, no reason to be worried about the overspray. As long as you know what it does, that's why I kind of do it on purpose when you're practicing. Know what it does. It's like in karate, right? They would have us get hit so we know what it feels like. So, if you ever had to fight, which, you know, my sensei said, best fight is, best way to win a fight is not to, not to fight at all. So... He would actually throw us and punch us and kick us. This way we would know what it felt like. Oh, wow. Look at that. Dwayne just finished a mural. That's exciting. And Tone is also doing a mural. That is great. And so you've been doing this week. Oh, man. I think I've seen that with the different historical... Figures like Frederick Douglass and everything. That's really nice, Mr. Tone. Really loving it. See, I pay attention to what you're doing, sir. Okay. Right over here on this side. A little bit darker. Sort of create that here I'm thinking of just painting in so over here we have a neck a bracelet I think I'm just gonna paint that in later oh King Tot very cool wow that's a, a great subject matter and mr. Dwayne what's your subject matter on your particular uh, mural sir Okay, so now the game plan is to come in with this kind of orangey color. We'll kind of uh, finish out the night coming in with this mid-transition tone. Before I do that, I'm going to use my freehand shield as soon as I locate it. And remember, it's under something or behind something. I just had it because I was working on a uh, India ink airbrush painting earlier today. Uh, if you were a freehand shield, where would you be? Let's see. Probably on the floor. Let me see. No, not on the floor. Hmm. Usually find it by now. Let's see. So the last part of the live stream is me looking for my freehand shield. Okay. Oh, there it is. Underneath something. Who would have thought it? Oh, you did that last summer. Oh, wow. Okay, very cool. Make sure that you're getting spray. Let's 
just reiterating this here. Just a tad. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to come in with this mid-tone. We come back, we're going to come in with the darkest darks and really make her start to pop and sing. That's what we want. So I'm going to I love this color. Remember that color? It was it was violet oxide and this new color, which was what was that new color? It was really interesting. Here it is. Burnt Umber Light. How weird. Okay, so we're going to clean this up. And we're going to put in a nice fleshy kind of pink color to kind of get that transition. So when we're working in the Airbrush India inks and doing it, we, we are noticing the values, but now we have to add chroma and hue to that value. So hue is the color, whether it's red, green, blue, that kind of thing. Uh, value is how dark a light it is, and chroma is how intense it is. Is it going towards the, gr the gray, right? So I'm going to put this off to the side. I love that color. All right, so... I think we are going to start off with titanium white again. We're going to bring our painting over here. So what do we learn tonight? Just attack it. Attack your painting. Have a sort of reckless abandon it. You know, when you get towards the middle game, you know? Just attack that blue shift. Don't be afraid of it. Okay, so we have this really nice pink. I like this here, this primary magenta. So I have this primary magenta here, my golden fluid acrylics. Not too much, because it's gonna kind of overpower that white. Now we're going to, since we have kind of fluid acrylics, so let's get some of this airbrush medium and kind of uh, loosen that up a bit. Make it flowable through the airbrush. Now, why wouldn't I just do straight water? Because it's an acrylic polymer, which is acting as the binder. And as it's acting as the binder, it is what keeps together. So we need more acrylic binder that is colorless to kind of spread that out and, and loosen it up. We can add water, but not too much, because then the pigments will separate and not adhere to the surface. Mr. Dwayne says uh, his was a tiki be is a was a tiki beach underwater reef scene and ice cream. Oh, that is so cool! Oh, that is great. Love to see that when you get a chance. Okay, see how intense that is. That's way too intense, but we can kind of um, it's a little orange. So pyro red is our color of the day. I think let's put some of that in there. And let's attack this color too, right? Let's let's first get that value looking at this. Kind of happy with it, but we need more white, more cowbell. Uh, let's see, more of... Uh, I don't want to use my zinc white. That's my special color for blue shift. So I like to go with the... This color right here, which is the titanium white. It's a much more opaque white. It's much more blue white. We'll mix that up. We're getting close. And look at that. Almost there. Hmm. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and we'll give it a try, see how it looks. So let's uh, add a little bit more of this airbrush medium, just a tad. And then we're going to add a little bit of the water. And 
Okay. It's a nice kind of blush. It's going to look darker on the painting. It always does. All right. Let's load this. Remember, we're going from a darker color to a lighter. So we're going to wash it out a lot better. We're going to blow it out a lot more. But it's okay because even if a little bit of that dark skin color that interacts with that, it's actually going to work to our benefit. Because this seems a bit a little light. Let's see how this goes, guys. The cap. Remember, the cap is messy. It has paint on it. And you can put that cap back on, and then a little bit of that paint goes in there and just blows out your mixture. Like I said, it's all chemistry stuff, and things get a lot more technical when you work in color. All right, let's see. Here we go. So let's see what happens. We don't know what's going to happen until it happens. So. Ah, uh, Brad, have a great night. Always a pleasure, sir. And Dwayne says he was having a hard time at first with it. They kept uh, wanting it a little more of a comic book look side and kept complaining it was too real. Complaining it's too realistic. How crazy is that? So now I can see this orangey kind of coral, azo coral color is really nice. Yeah, that's really, really doing a good job. Like I said in before, you want to, you want to spray and then move away. Right? So you're going to spray, move away, let it, let it attach to that, and then go ahead and, uh, and then reapply. But you can see it's taking that area that we intentionally blue shift and replacing it with a rich, beautiful skin tone. Now you don't want to put this medium color in the light, in the, in the darker areas, because then you'll have a blue shift you don't intend. I'm, I'm happy with it so far. There's more work to do, of course, but happy with it nonetheless. There we go. So, kind of liking it. Not loving it yet, but liking it. And let's put some of this color on her lip here. And a little bit on the lower lip. Okay, so that's where we're going to stop now. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. Uh, so you can see we have some going dark over here, kind of control that come in with that orange and zinc white pyro orange and zinc white and bring back the lights and but you can see that it's it's we're losing that uh, that whole tentative uh, look of transparent and going headlong into it and we're going to continue working it and it's going to come together and then we'll start coming in with some colored pencil techniques and stuff like that to bring it. But we have a lot of work to do here. And you can see this is all kind of blue shifted. But when we come in with the darker colors, we're going to get a nice surface texture. And, oh, thank you so much. Dwayne says it's an, he likes the effect and it's turning out great. Thank you, sir. Have a great night. Thank you, Dwayne and Brad, for the Super Chat stickers. Thank you, everyone, for spending time with me on this Wednesday night. You are all great. Uh, uh, 
stay safe and don't breathe too much in, in unintentional smoke very true i appreciate that mr Dwayne. guys i will see you next week stay safe and happy good to see you mr brad smith and i'm so glad you're back everyone have a great weekend if you have any technical questions never hesitate to go ahead and give me an email i'm always happy to hear from everyone take care everybody